Hey, Brian. <laughs> hey, everyone. Um, as I said just a little bit ago, we're here from Nashville at Local Honey. I'm excited to be doing the Prevate Takeover. Um, and we got some fun stuff in store for you. So I think what we're going to um, kind of hang out just for a minute to let some people log in and kind of see who's coming to visit before we get moving forward. But this is Kelly. Um, <laughs> she is, uh, she's been a model for probably about a year and a half, maybe. And um, we met at a restaurant. I recruited her. She has such a cool look and such a cool feel. Um, that we've kind of been doing evolving looks as the time has gone on. And so um, she's growing it. And so I wanted to do something that would be super interesting, but kind of working within the bounds of keeping some light. So, with that, how far in are we already? How far? We've got three, two viewers, three viewers right now. It's, it's Natalie. Um, yeah, it's Natalie. Um, <laughs> hi, Krista. Krista says, thanks for sharing your talent. Thank you for coming to watch. Yeah, we're, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to have this opportunity. Um, yeah. So, we'll, we'll just wait. We'll just wait, and I'm going to kind of look through the section. Cool. See where we are. These kids are laughing. Aaron Johnson just joined. Hi, Aaron. <laughs> Hazel and B are going nuts waving at you. <laughs> where are we at? Freebay says thank you for doing a takeover. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to do it. <laughs> Started? Yeah. Sweet. So as I said, um, Kelly has been growing it out. So we have to kind of work within the bounds of, I guess, what I would say is our safety net. And for me, it's like that little spot right behind the ear, knowing that we can we can layer up to that point, and knowing that we don't want to we don't want to take a lot a lot of length away from um, the perimeter here. But like we're growing it out to be more of a bob shape. We can really get more aggressive with that. Uh, Kelly is always open to super short frames, so to me, it, what I really want to change up is is really leaning out this middle, and then we're going to bump this up and bump this up. So allow this to kind of be what it is and lighten some of the weight out of it, but but keep that that perimeter strong. So what I decided that we'll do is um, first going into knowing that her collet is super wicked strong. Uh, I wanted to make sure that we keep enough density over that. But from there, I wanted to approach uh, the layering pattern as we'll, we'll do kind of a round layer, we'll, or like we'll set our guide in round, and then we're going to work square. So over direction, like a round, over direct, I guess over directed square shape. So uh, the big thing to me is, like I said, just leaning out the center part here. So we'll start with the center guide. And, I, and again, like I, I said here, I'm, I'm being very co uh, conscious of like, we have plenty of room to, to work here. We're, we're only gonna take this in somewhere around this length. But then also in the front, like letting ourselves have enough hair to drop over and keep that weight in there. So I'm just gonna take classic kind of central section. Kind of, kind of look. I just want to look. I'm going to let drop out. I know I'm going to come up within an inch of her hairline, so I'm going to look at what's going to give me room and how 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 short I can go. And then the other spot I'm going to check is right here, down at the bottom, like where I'm at with with where I want to keep down here. And what it seems like is I'm going to run out of hair just above occipital bone. This is so I'm safe back here, and I have to be a little bit more cautious right here. I'm going to lift this stuff up, kind of start cutting. Brian, can you go back to why you're leaving the fringe out mm -hmm. of that guide? Yeah, definitely. So like I said, right now, if I was leaving the fringe where it is, it would be too weak because I know 
you see that strength there. Mm -hmm. So to me, knowing that I'm going to come up, I'm just, like I said, being conscious of how much I can let drop where then it will feel solid and then that weight will, will set over and uh, overpower the collar. I mean, for certain looks I do, but knowing, like I know Kelly and I know her aesthetic, so if I can work with the colic and let it do its thing and someone's okay with that, I'm definitely going to push that. I don't, I don't necessarily always think colic bad, you know, I think that's a, a general rule that's, that's pretty general, you know. Kind of push the boundaries a little bit. Yes, exactly. Can you explain why you chose to blunt cut your guide? Um, I think I, I want to see like I want to see a strong shape first before I start breaking into it. So I think initially it's it's uh, for me it's structure and texture, but structure first. Like I want to be I want to be able to to grow out strong and be strong, uh, but then then I'll go in and kind of look and I'm not afraid to really break it apart after I've done that. Okay. It's, it's, it's super important to me that someone will go home, like, as, uh, as far as we press some shape, it's important to me to know that they'll still go home and that we'll grow out properly. Okay. And they'll have a grow out, you know, a good grow out. Daniel is watching also. Have your shears. <laughs> Thank you. O'Brien. Daniel, uh, Pastor. Oh, sorry. sorry. No, I don't have yours. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, Daniel. Okay. Thanks for watching. And you're really just meeting it into that length that she previously had. Exactly. So instead of following the round, and now I'm working over direction, and it'll stay round, but to that over direction. Mm -hmm. So as the head starts around, I'll stay stationary. So the, the middle the middle three sections, the middle four sections will stay, uh, will be a moving guide, and as we get to the round of the head, it will become stationary. Mm -hmm. Jesse Mangrum says, as you're building the structure with the bluntness, are you already visualizing where you'll go back and add texture? Um, I have ideas, but at the same time, I'm looking to see how it reacts. Thanks, Jesse. Uh, I want to kind of, I think the structure part is the, is the blueprint, the general outline, and then the texture is what makes the haircut the individuals, for me at least. Do you typically prefer to add texture wet or dry, or both? I, Does it depend? It depends, yeah. To me it's like, if I can read it well one way, then... When it's still wet, I'll start texturizing. But I, if if I haven't done someone's hair before, I'd rather um, be a little bit milder with that, and then and then again react to to see what it's doing. Dry. Can you explain your over direction at this point? So right now, again, like what we talked about at the beginning is knowing where this my safety spot is. And so knowing I'm not going to cut past that okay. spot there. Yeah. And so with the over direction, um, I'm, I'm safe. I know, you know, I've kind of plotted all that out. And so I know that I'm going to keep that corner right here. Okay. And we're not going to take away from... The you know keeping the, that the, the main criteria of not losing much length right here. What do you 
feeling has gotten you to the point that you have more people that you get to have fun with their hair? Like, how do you how do you build your clientele so that you have fun at work and still make it happen? For you? So, so the main thing was um, before I came came over to Local Honey for the few years before that, I was trying to figure out how how not to do hair, uh, and so coming over here and trying to to keep up with. Uh, you know, my role and the people around me, I needed to figure out how I could do that. So the main thing was is starting to do models, starting to do uh, free haircuts every every Wednesday of people that I found interesting or that would let me push push the things that I couldn't on my, on my regular clientele. And so um, that's been huge. I mean, it's, it's I feel like I've, I've done hair 18 years and it's changed my perspective. I mean, it's, it's, it's it strengthened my perspective. I feel like I had something to say prior to that, but the main thing was uh, I didn't get to do the things I wanted. I kind of waited for those things to come to me, and that doesn't happen. That doesn't happen in anything. And so I feel like the main thing is if you want to be doing haircuts, like you see the different people that have hosted uh, some of these Privé takeovers, you have to sometimes do that for free and take the time and find and from the effort to find those people uh, that will let you do it. And then it just cascades. I mean, it's changed my clientele. I, I love what I do now more than I ever have. So uh, the main takeaway is, is, is if you love it enough, give it away. You know, it, it'll come back to you. How did you come to Local Honey? So, I had originally come to Nashville years ago to teach classes, and and through um, through that connection is how I ended up coming here. Um, it was kind of as someone who had kind of remembered my history for me, and then. Uh, and then uh, another friend owner really pursuing me, and again, just at the right at the right time. So, yeah, it's been it's been game changing. It's been life changing. Uh, I'm very grateful to be here and to be part of our team. Our team is, is here helping me out today, which I super appreciate. Um, and we're growing something that's super great, and I'm I'm proud to be a part of it. Prive asked if you can let your view our viewers know how they can reach out to you for classes and how they can follow you on all of your social media. Sure. So I wrote it down somewhere. Do you want to get it? Yeah. <laughs> Being a visual visual person myself, I figured this would be a easier way to do it. Yeah. So, but classes wise, um, class wise, we are. Um, I guess I'm out on the road about. Uh, every six weeks, which is a good amount, and then we have education here at Local Honey, and I think as the year moves on, we'll amp up to do more and more. We started doing um, we started doing some education last year, and it was just kind of right when we right when we opened the doors of this space, and um, it was just a little bit early. So I think we're kind of regrouping with that now and kind of refocusing that, but I hope by the end of the year that we'll, we'll start hosting some regular classes here also. I don't know if you guys saw that paper that we just held up, but you can follow Brian on Instagram at brianhickman1, and you can follow Local Honey at Local Honey, um, or it's at local underscore honey. And two, um, uh, Kazi also did some color and like she, she, she's on there and uh, some of the group is on there too. Yeah. Thanks for posting that, Bridget. <laughs> cool. So I'm just kind of cross checking through.
Now from this point. We're gonna kind of switch to. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna go some leaner sections and we're gonna file the round of the head still but stay square. Okay, I'll come on this side. Talk about how local honey has changed since you've been here. So from so from coming in and what my role was initially was to kind of help build an apprentice program, which I've done along with Bridget, who's right back here too. I don't know if you saw her Instagram, but uh, she's she's been our color director, and I've worked on the cutting aspect of it, and it's 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 become really great. We've grown a lot. We've uh, We've gone from 11 chairs to, um, within the next few weeks, we'll be up to 22. And the program has gone from just a handful of people to uh, our next module, we're hoping to be up to somewhere around 8 to 10. So it's, it's um, yeah, it's, it's been great. And, and then the other big part of what we've wanted to focus on is helping the stylists stay stimulated and feel like they're growing. And so we've gone from doing big, sh uh, big photo shoots for the whole staff every um, <laughs> eight, like six to eight weeks to, as July hits, we'll be doing bi-weekly bi ones with smaller, with smaller groups. And um, our advanced education happens every other Wednesday evening, which is either cut color style and just kind of rotate. And we have the staff involved in that, as well as having people come in from outside also. So, Are you just working vertically on each side and then bringing it up and cutting square? Exactly. Okay. So just being conscious of, yeah, we really want to maintain the corner more, more than the corner, I guess. But. Paula Laughlin wants to know how you got your start as an educator. So... I went through a few few apprentice, apprenticeships and then just connected with product companies early on. Uh, initially, Tony and Guy, and then uh, just kind of was was assisting on my days off through through an educator up, uh, from just outside of Chicago, and so just connected with with a guy up there, and then started taking classes out of Dallas, and then. Through that, met some people, and it, it took me to, to Bumble in New York, which again I apprenticed, and and I was there for a very short time. I, um, I didn't I didn't complete that, but it, it made such a lasting impact on on what I do. I, I so I moved back to Chicago and continued to take classes through Bumble for the next eight years, and it just opened so many doors. And again, like just Bumble was all was at that time was all about all about perspective and developing your eye and I think that that's had a big impact for me. Um, so from there then when I moved back within the year I started um, taking on apprentices and for the most part it's been one-on-one um, -on -one throughout the years. It's just been uh, me with one person as they've come along and I've worked at salons that have just allowed me to do that, I guess, just to, because I wanted to, and it's been such a, like a smaller thing, which has been a great, um, it's been a great tool to, to be able to kind of work at a smaller scale and kind of see what works and what doesn't, and, and this has been fun too, just changing it and adapting it to a bigger, a bigger group, and, and, and seeing how, as, you know, I guess 18 years later, how, how different the industry is, and how, uh, yeah, how how just to teach to the next generation. It's been it's been pretty fun. Thank you for your question. Let's talk about how you started using Instagram. So Instagram, yeah, it was was like I said, it was a pretty similar thing. I was just trying to trying to keep up with the young folks here, and trying to press some things that I hadn't hadn't worked on in a long time, so, or, or just hadn't had the chance to. I always kept that, I always had that attitude when I would go to a class of why would I, you know, I was waiting for that person of that technique to come in and, um, and, and so I could work on that and, and they never came, so 
going back to what I said earlier about just taking the time to um, invest in that has been huge and I think yeah it just started out me trying to keep up honestly so it's been amazing I've just been able to connect with so many people and meet so many great interesting um, talented people and, and just you know that I'm here doing this today is because of that so it's been a crazy fun journey Nicholas says hi See you this weekend. <laughs> so now, yeah, just kind of check in. Cool. Amelia said, "Yay for local honey." <laughs> Hi, Amelia. <laughs> Paula asked if you began with an instructor's license. Uh, I've never had a license. To instruct. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Let's make that clear. <laughs> I mean, in Illinois, basically I've had apprentices. I'm not a, I'm not a licensed state educator. Uh, or Tennessee doesn't have continuing education hours. Uh, Illinois, Illinois did, but... Uh, like I said, it was always more about working one-on-one -on -one with apprentices, uh, young folks. And then, uh, like I said, what's developed, I guess, in the last couple of years has just been pretty organic because of social media. All right. Is that how you find most of your models? It's a mix. A mix? Yeah, it's a mix of... Uh, if I see someone that when I'm out, or uh, I would say majority, majority now is social media because it's, it's I guess a less creepy way, <laughs> so people can just see all my work right away and not uh, think I'm like creeping or something on them. So yeah, <laughs> it's a uh, it's just like a direct line to my work, you know. Were you creeped out when I gave you my card? Or no. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I was with my wife and kids. So. <laughs> so you can see now. So if I, like I said earlier, if, if we just left this, that would overpower everything. So now to, we're going to go short. We're going to take this out, take that out of the equation. take instruction from you not being an apprentice at local honey so if you if someone wanted to host me at their salon you could message me and, and I would give you rates on that and how that works um, and same thing like if you were interested in coming to visit and we didn't have a set class put in uh, just message me on Instagram and, and, and I'll tell you how that would work And I'm just kind of partying recession to recession, and I'm just going to feel this out. So I'm, I'm definitely, like, have to watch this. And I think a big part of, again, what I was talking about earlier is that the repetition of this is, I was thinking about this as I was cutting someone's fringe the other day, and I know that if I would have done something, you know, done something like that two years ago, and just set that general thing in, I would have been so I was so nervous. But a big part of this is just watching it react and, and, and then reacting with it. And I think there's nothing like repetition to to make you comfortable with that. And just so cutting, cutting, combing, cutting, cutting, combing. Nicholas said he took the history of Bob class with Bridget and Brian. Amazing. Thanks, Nick. And then Krista asked if you were going to be at Elevate this weekend. I will be, yeah. Yeah, I'm excited for that. Um, always super fun and such a good group of people. Um, a few of us will be, Carly Ray will be participating. Kazi will probably do some, uh, some color and just a strong group of people coming. 
again, just one of those things where you're around people that are excited to be doing what they're doing. It's kind of, it's uh, magnetic. It's exciting. It just draws, draws, you know, draws me in more and more to what I'm doing. So kind of, yeah, so just kind of seeing, just reading that, letting that kind of do its natural thing. As we move into the sections, we'll kind of see, like, we may, I may react a little bit more and take that even shorter. Cassandra Cutter said, killing it as always, Brian. Hey, Cassandra. Thanks for watching. You're her favorite model, too, Brian. <laughs> right? <laughs> Can you explain why you subdivided your sections for her fringe? Yeah, so I think that first section, to me, as I'm just trying to get a read on that initial section to see how it's moving around. And so these secondary ones will be just building up weight over top of it. In the places that need it. So and then two, it's like to me it's about trying to find density balance. So where the, these areas where there's the colic has no power, that, that, that density is going to fall in so much more. And so, uh, again, like just trying to read what that's doing and trying to find that balance. And a lot of it's just like visually just breaking up where it needs to be and staying strong where it needs to be strong. Paula asked, does that end up being longer than the underneath? No, it really shouldn't. No, no, it shouldn't. It, 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 at most, it'll be all of the weight sitting on top of where it needs to. At, and then at some point, with the way that stuff's going to be broken up, it'll be, you know, yeah. It, 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 nothing will be longer, no. Okay. Definitely. I think that's something that we talk about a lot here is just having references with everything. I mean, it, to, to me it's a lot of, I don't know, I guess that goes back to some of my training, just having like, like older references. I think it's important to have that, even you know, with clients or with whatever you're doing, it's much more interesting to reference, uh, you know, um, sorry. <laughs> uh, like someone from you know the 20s or 30s or 60s and just using the current people that you know that make up where that's where they're getting their influences is uh, you know like Linda Evangelista's little box bob or Louise Brooks's box bob or you know things like that where I think it just gives you I don't know it makes us more interesting if we have more depth than just what we see magazines or in pop culture. Cool. So I'll leave some looseness until I dry that. But again, I'm not going to over dry anything. I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to, like, overwork anything. I think the big focus for me with her hair will be, especially now that we kind of see what that's doing, this is going to be super minimal dry, 
I think the last thing is we'll take this back off and then we'll kind of rough dry. I'll use a flat brush within maybe the first couple of sections around her face. But overall, I don't want to use, I don't want to overwork her hair because I don't want her to have to overwork her hair. Would you say that's your approach with most clients is not overworking their hair, being able, so that way they can go home and be able to style it themselves? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I think that's, uh, I think for me the benefit of some of that time where I was just kind of behind the chair and doing what I was doing is I just kind of showed up and, and did the best I could. I wasn't super excited, but I think that was kind of part of the mindset I took on was to try to keep it, think, try to keep things minimal as possible. James has a nice shape, Brian. Thanks, James. Thanks for tuning in. Jane asks, she said, wondering if you have a favorite brand of shears and blade. Um, for the longest time, I used a pair of Matsusakis that were, I think they're like six, and, or they're six inch, and then um, my friend Dan O'Brien sent me these, these little guys, which I've never cut with, but I've loved them. It's probably been the last month. Um, thanks, Dan, if you're watching. Uh, but these are Hikari uh, New Cosmos. Yeah, I, I love these little ones. Do you use the little mostly for detail work or for, you've been using them the whole hair time, right? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, still, I've used my bigger ones more for shear over, I've like kind of switched those ones over to shear over comb and some of like just plowing some stuff, you know, getting hair out of the way. Um, but yeah, for the most part, these have become my my daily my daily use utility scissor, I guess. Can we turn her this way? Yeah. How do you get clients to trust you to this degree? You tend to create very strong work. I think, and, and I don't know if it's everywhere, but in Nashville, social Instagram has been really big. I mean, people will come in seeing my work, and so there's that trust already there. Um, and I'm not doing this all day long, just like none of us are, I don't, you know. But, um, but the big thing is a lot of them now come to me and ask me to do things like this, which is, like, like I said, it's been amazing that that time invested has been so worth it. Knock this off. I'm just going to, like, slightly undercut that.
Missy says your hair looks great. Right. <laughs> your personal hair. Mine does? <laughs> Who said that? Missy. 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 Missy Mae. Oh, Missy thank Mayan. you. Thank you. My wife did it. <laughs> I better give her credit or I'll be in trouble. <laughs> I'm just going to rough dry her, like I said, I'm mostly, uh, mostly with my hands, a little bit with a flat brush, and then I'll, I'll refine everything. That's kind of when we'll make it, like I said, this to me is like the general shape, and then when we're finished, it will become hers. So while I'm doing that, Kazia was going to talk about the color she did for Perfect. Kelly. So, Kazia? Okay. Thank you, and thank you Free Day for letting Brian do this and in turn giving me an opportunity as well. Um, so for Kelly, um, she showed me a bunch of pictures of really long hair, which I know it happens a lot with clients with short hair. Um, and she showed me pictures of kind of like a cooler, kind of brown gray into like a peachy orange color. Um, so I know I wanted to keep lines really strong for Brian. Um, so I kept all of her ends really solid in the front. So when he does like that really short fringe, it doesn't look too creepy. Um, so I lightened out. She had some previously uh, colored purpley kind of tones. I lightened that out with just a really low developer. Um, then toned her like gray into silver and then did the peachy orange color over that. And that was about it. Pretty easy. Kazia, can you tell everybody where they can find you on Instagram? Yes. My Instagram handle is colors by Kazia and it's K A Z I A. Great. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Brian, don't forget to say hi to your mom. Hi, She's mom. watching. Hi, mom. <laughs> So basically, I'm just kind of flat wrapping her hair. Again, I, I know I know her hair. I know how it's going to react. I know I don't have to work too hard on, on you know, basically all of it except her brain. So, um, got my little, my little, little flat brush. Yeah, just like we're, we're, we just have like a light leave-in, and then we just have a smoothing product, like kind of a uh, like a smoothing paste in there, just to kind of help collapse things down. So just yeah, super super um, like moisturizing leave-in, and, and then like yes, uh, just more something to kind of collapse a little bit. And I'm just gonna be focusing like that first inch inch and a half around her hairline. Harrison McCrow said, absolutely beautiful shape. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it.
the main focus here, we'll start back with our friend. And then we'll kind of go from there. Front or on the top, or does it depend on the shape, or just, just depend on the shape? I mean, I think today because of what, like, just the balance of what, what I wanted to talk about, um, it made sense to kind of finish with the perimeter. I think to me it was more about like keeping the perimeter. So, I'm, I mean, I mix it up though. I mean, I've, I've been doing this just like a lot of us have for a long time, and. I want to keep it interesting for myself, but I would say, if, like, if I was, if you know, if I'm gonna go up front and I want to make a really big impact initially, then yeah, just just to go at that front is kind of it's super fun and it kind of sets the tone of the rest of the haircut. But it, it varies honestly, just to keep myself enter entertained and for feeling fresh. For those who have joined later on, do you want to do a brief recap of the shape? Totally. Yeah, once we get through the fringe, I will Perfect. I'll break it down. Right now, yeah, like just to recap what it's about, the fringe is what uh, what I said earlier is we're we're kind of fighting the balance and the, the density of that colic, and so that's kind of what I'm doing here is, is just kind of continue to chip away until I see what I want. I guess that's the like the, the pleasure of having someone you know clients and and then, and models also that trust you. It's, Amelia asked, do you ever use a different pair of shears when dry cutting or usually use the same pair throughout the whole haircut? Mm. There's, there's times where I'll switch to a longer shear for internal stuff. Um, for refining, I, like I said, I really have been, I really love these little guys. I feel like it's just, I can be in there a little bit closer. Um, but yeah, with like if I'm gonna really go in and break something up, like with deep point cutting, I prefer maybe just a little bit longer shear. And to me, also, like I said earlier, it's just about like combing, moving, combing, moving, combing. So now, just see, yeah, I kind of like I know I can be much more aggressive here and here, and then we just need that density there. So, like, I'm just kind of looking to kind of break that stuff up and just look for the softness and the pieciness that it's basically looking until I feel satisfied with what I'm seeing.
what we've gone so far. We're going to do more. Let me dust her off real quick, okay. too. So to recap what we talked about at the beginning was uh, we wanted to keep most of this length, so we've been growing this out. And so the big thing to me was leaning out kind of this centralized like mohawk area and just talked about where where our safety nets were. So knowing like when I layered this back here, I could be this far back in and without losing my corner here. And then same thing up top, how, how short could we go with with these layers up here between this corner and then also then maintain enough density so when we came back through on her fringe that we would that would that would all sit over top like that and give that enough to to lay down um, so the big thing so basically took a central guide round and then squared off from there over directed here kind of through here so uh, round section square layer so now I'm just going to go through and, and kind of piece out some of this stuff here. So the main thing I'm going to look at is just making sure enough density drops out because we've worked that all in with texture and kind of the way we're pointing in the, just the, the texture, texturizing. And so now it's just kind of going through. And I really feel like I can, well, I'm check, cross-checking, but also I'm going to, break things up a little bit more. So I'm just going to kind of do a loose generic, just cutting out some triangles, drop it down, look, am I happy? The big thing to me is you're looking at what you're doing and you're, it's not just a I think when it becomes generic is when it becomes boring for all of us. So um, to take the time to slow down enough to look, um, I think is important. I think it's something that, that we can all forget. I know that I have in the past. <laughs> You're killing her here with all <laughs> That's the bad part, right? I, I explain that to all clients. I like. This is what the this the way that we chip out the bangs like this is what makes makes this my favorite thing, but it's also the worst thing too. It feels not so good. Beauty is pain. Yes. And you switched to a different shear for this. Yeah, and I switched to my like my six inch Matsusaki. Not even, I've had these forever. I mean, I've had these for 18 years and they still sharpen. I love them. Did someone ask about colic earlier or did you just ask that, Bridget? Or? Bridget asked yeah, it. Yeah, because I, I will go back in and kind of the same way I kind of sliced at uh, her fringe, I'll go in and kind of break out the, the pocket around her, around her colic to make it, make it a feature instead of a, something we don't like. Are you just visualizing where that calic naturally falls? Yeah. Okay. Cameron said we should do some live stuff on Saturday. I'd love to. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited you're coming back out. It's going to be fun. Got a good group coming to hang out. Again, I'm just kind of looking where weight's built up and where do I want it. And just, you know how that weight can pocket right behind the ear. So I'm just going to look at that and kind of break some of that open. So just to soften the blend. And with this, what I'm doing with these is kind of, I'm picking, 
a spot on the hair and visualizing basically a triangle that's going to start pretty steep. We don't want, um, like if you're not steep enough, you get that kind of chunk of weight. And if you don't follow through all the way to really close or all the way to that end piece, you're just going to have like more of a, like a flat line. See how that just tucks that a little bit? Mm -hmm. Again, we don't want to lose what we've what we've saved, but and again reading side to side. This side doesn't this side doesn't buckle quite the same. And so I'm not gonna like, overkill with this, so just a little bit. Krista Varnum asked if you have any other cutting classes coming up. I don't have it. Um, let me think about that. I'm doing Elevate this weekend. I'm doing a class in Chicago on the 19th with Kazia and Christian and Sam. Um, Christian, Christian's Instagram is uh, Christian Awesome. I'm sorry, Sam. I don't know how to pronounce your last name. <laughs> it, it, what? Yeah, it's really hard. I'm, I'm bad at I'm bad at anyhow. She's amazing though if you don't follow her. Um, but yeah, just those two, and then like I said, hopefully by the end of the year we'll have some dates at local honey. Or if you'd like to bring me out, um, message me on Instagram, Brian Hickman one. Just cross checking and looking, cross checking and looking at what what's there. What are you looking for at this point? Just checking balance and checking depth. I mean, kind of just, yeah. To me, it's just, this is the point where I'm just kind of looking for anything that my, my eye tells me is inconsistent. And again, that's different for 